The First Sunday of Advent This Sunday, the first of the ecclesiastical year, is called, in the chronicles and charts of the Middle Ages, Ad Te Lavavi Sunday, from the first words of the introit, or Auspicians Alangi, from the first words of one of the responsories of Matins. The station, subscript, the stations marked in the Roman Missal for certain days in the year were formerly processions, in which the whole clergy and people went to some given church and there celebrated the office and mass. This usage, which dates from the earliest period of the Roman Church, and of which St. Gregory the Great was but the restorer, still exists at least in a measure, for the stations are still observed, though with less solemnity and concourse of people, on all the days specified in the Missal. End subscript. Is at St. Mary Majors. It is under the auspices of Mary, in the splendid basilica, which possesses the crib of Bethlehem, and is therefore called in ancient documents St. Mary's Ad Presepe, that the Roman Church recommences each year the sacred cycle. It would have been impossible to select a place more suitable than this for saluting the approach of the divine birth, which is to gladden heaven and earth and manifest the sublime portent of a virgin mother. Let us go in spirit to this august temple, and unite in the prayers which are there being offered up. They are the very ones we also use, and which we will now explain. In the night office, the church commences the reading of the book of Isaiah, who, of all the prophets, has the most distinctly and explicitly foretold the Messiah. And she continues this same book until Christmas Day inclusively. Let us strive to enter into the teaching of the Holy Prophet, and let the eye of our faith affectionately recognize the promised Savior in the descriptions, sometimes consoling and sometimes terrifying, under which Isaiah depicts him. The first words of the church in the still midnight are these. Regum venturum dominum venite arremus. Come, let us adore the King, our Lord, who is to come. This first duty of adoration, complied with, let us listen to the oracle of the prophet Isaiah, delivered to us by the Holy Church. Beginning of the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Ozias, Joathan, Achaz, and Ezekias, kings of Judah, Hear, O ye heavens, and give ear. O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have brought up children and exalted them, but they have despised me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel hath not known me, and my people hath not understood. Woe to the sinful nation! a people laden with iniquity, a wicked seed, ungracious children. They have forsaken the Lord. They have blasphemed the Holy One of Israel. They are gone away backwards. For what shall I strike you any more, you that increase transgression? The whole head is sick, 
and the whole heart is sad. From the sole of the foot unto the top of the head, there is no soundness therein. Wounds and bruises and swelling sores, they are not bound up, nor dressed, nor fomented with oil. These words of the Holy Prophet, or rather of God, who speaks to us by the Prophet, should make a deep impression on the children of the Church at this opening of the Holy Period of Advent. Who could hear without trembling this voice of our Lord, who is despised and unknown even at the very time when He is coming to visit His people? Thus men should be terrified at the splendor of his majesty. He divested himself of it, and far from acknowledging the divine power of him who thus humbled himself out of love to them, these men have refused even to know him, and the crib where he lay after his birth had, at first, but two dumb animals to honor or notice it. Do you feel, Christians, how just are the complaints which your God here makes, and how your indifference for all his love is an insult? He calls heaven and earth to witness. He utters anathema against the sinful nation, his ungrateful children. Let us honestly confess that we, too, have not known the value of our Jesus' visit to us, that we have but too faithfully imitated the obduracy of the Jews, who heeded not the bright light when it burst upon their darkness. In vain did the angels sing on that December night. In vain did shepherds receive and welcome the invitation to adore the babe and know him. In vain did the Magi come from the east, asking where they were to find the crib of the king that was born. At this last example, the city of Jerusalem was somewhat moved, but the astonishment was only for a moment, and the old indifference soon stifled the good tidings. Thus it is. O oh, Jesus, that thou comest into darkness, and darkness does not comprehend thee. We beseech thee, let our darkness comprehend the light and desire it. The day will come when thou wilt disperse the spiritual and voluntary darkness of men by the awful light of thy justice. Thy glory, O oh, sovereign judge, will be magnificent on that day, and we love to think upon thy having it. But during these days of our life on earth, deliver us from thy wrath. We are one great wound from the sole of the foot unto the top of the head. Thou knowest not where to strike. Be, then, a savior, O Jesus, in this coming for which we are now preparing. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart is sad. Come, and raise up this head, which shame and vile passions bow down to the earth. Come, and comfort this heart, oppressed with sin and fear. We confess it. Our wounds are deep and sore. Come, thou good Samaritan, pour in thy soothing oil and heal them. The whole world is in expectation of its Redeemer. Come, dear Jesus, show thyself to it by granting it salvation. The church, thy bride, is now commencing another year, and her first word is to thee, a word which she speaks in the anxious solicitude of a mother for the safety of her children. 
she cries out to thee, saying, Come! No, we will go no farther in our journey through the desert of this life without thee, O Jesus. Time is passing quickly away from us. Our day is perhaps far spent, and the shades of our life's night are fast coming on. Arise, O divine Son of Justice, come, guide our steps, and save us from eternal death. The Mass When the priest is approaching the altar, there to offer up the holy sacrifice, the Church opens her chants by this beautiful one, which so well expresses her confidence as the beloved bride of Jesus. Let us repeat it together with her, and let the heart be in harmony with our voice. For the Savior comes to each of us in proportion to the earnestness of our longing for him. Adeleva anima mea Deus meus, in te confido, non erubescam, neque iride ant me, inimici, Vias tuas domine demonstra mihi, et semitas tuas edoce me. Gloria patri et filio et spiritu is sancto, sicut erat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. After the Kyrie eleison, the priest embodies in the following prayers called on that account the Calix all the desires and petitions of the Church for this first Sunday. It is right that we should also beg, during this holy season, the all-powerful meditation of her who, at first, was the sole depository of the great secret which was to give life to the world. Let us then say with the priest, in honor of the Blessed Virgin, to this is immediately added one of the following prayers. Against the persecution of the Church and prayers for the Pope. The Epistle The Savior, then, who is coming to us, is the clothing which we are to put on over our spiritual nakedness. Here, let us admire the goodness of our God, who, remembering that man hid himself after his sin because he was naked, vouchsafes himself to become man's clothing, and to cover with the robe of his divinity the misery of human nature. Let us, therefore, be on the watch for the day and the hour 
when he will come to us, and take precautions against the drowsiness which comes of custom and self-indulgence. The light will soon appear. May its first rays be witness of our innocence, or at least of our repentance. If our Savior is coming to put over our sins a covering which is to hide them forever, the least that we, on our part, can do is to retain no further affection for those sins. Else it will be said of us that we refuse our salvation. The last words of this epistle are those which caught the eye of St. Augustine, when, after a long resistance to the grace which pressed him to give himself to God, he resolved to obey the voice which said to him, Tole lege, take and read. They decided his conversion. He immediately resolved to abandon the worldly life he had hitherto led, and to put on Christ Jesus. Let us begin this very day and imitate this saint. Let us long for that dear and glorious clothing with which the mercy of our Heavenly Father is soon to cover us. And let us say with the Church these touching words, which we cannot repeat too often during this time of year.
gospel. Thou art to come, then, O Jesus, and all the terror of the last judgment, and when men least expect thee. In a few days thou art coming to us to clothe our misery with the garment of thy mercy, a garment of glory and immortality to us. But thou art to come again on a future day, and in such dread majesty that men will wither away with fear. O oh, my Saviour, condemn me not on that day of the world's destruction. Visit me now in thy love and mercy. I am resolved to prepare my soul. I desire that thou shouldst come and be born within me, so that when the convulsions of nature warn me of thy coming to judge me, I may lift up my head as thou biddest thy faithful disciples do, who, when the rest of men shall tremble at the thunder of thy judgment, will have confidence in thee, because they have thee in their hearts. During the offering of the bread and wine, the church, with her look steadfastly fixed on him who is to come, keeps to her sweet canticle the offertory. <laughs> Secrets. After the communion of the priests and people, the choir sings these beautiful words of David in praise of the sweetness of the divine fruit whom our earth is going to bring forth and who has just given himself by anticipation to his faithful servants. This earth, which is ours, is the Blessed Virgin made fruitful by the dew of heaven, and which, as the prophet Isaiah says, opens and buds forth the Savior. Love you. 